Most of the top SEOs that I know and trust say that traditional SEO and AI SEO are pretty much the same. And I would agree, if you're sitting on a directory that gets a thousand monthly visitors because you did the keyword research, you did the on-page SEO, and you created the valuable content, then you probably are already being cited by ChatGPT without even knowing it. So you can stick with the traditional SEO route and then cross your fingers, hoping that you'll get cited by ChatGPT and other LLMs, but that's kind of a hands-off approach. If you wanna be more proactive in your approach and actually understand understand things like how much monthly search volume you could be missing out on from people typing in prompts in ChatGPT, then this is when you would want to consider one of the top AI SEO toolkits like SEMrush. So in the first half of this video, I just want to show you how you can quickly check if ChatGPT is sending you any traffic and what you can do with this data to sort of manually reverse engineer what types of prompts people are typing into ChatGPT that's leading to more traffic to your directory. In the second half, we'll take the more intentional approach with AI SEO and we'll audit two different directories to identify the missed opportunities and just ways that they can improve their LLM visibility. One of them, by the way, is a lead gen directory. It's Sam's List by Kimmy Green. And then the second directory is just one of the directories someone built in my Shipper Directory Pro community. And he's trying to earn money through display ads. So he needs a lot of volume coming to his website. But with that, I'll show you how you can check to see if ChatGPT is even sending you any traffic. And we can do that by looking at our Google Analytics. And right now I'm looking at my scratch and dent directory, my first AI coded directory. And if I wanted to see what ChatGPT was sending me in terms of traffic, all I would have to do is head over to this left side area under generate leads. I could click on traffic acquisition, scroll down and then choose this drop down menu, go to session source medium, and then click on this plus icon, head over to page slash screen landing page plus query string, and then click on this. And after I click that, I can just head to this search bar and type in ChatGPT, press enter, and now I can see the traffic as well as the specific pages that ChatGPT is sending traffic to. It looks like I've gotten 187 sessions in the last 30 days, and that's not bad, especially for a directory that's only about two months old. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is because if you are going to invest in your AI SEO strategy and get tools like SEMrush's AI SEO toolkit, then you should know that you are already getting traffic from LLMs. Then you can actually unlock the full potential of those tools because it would kind of suck if you invested in these tools and and then realized there's not enough data to go off of. It's really not so different than when you're just getting Ahrefs or SEMrush's regular SEO toolkit. It's just so much easier to create a game plan when you already have an understanding of what keywords you're ranking for and where your traffic is going, even if you have a little bit of traffic. By the way, if you do want to check if you're getting traffic from other LLMs, you can just change ChatGPT to Claude and then press enter. In this case, I'm not getting any traffic from Claude. You can change it to Perplexity, and it looks like I'm getting two sessions every month from perplexity and just change this out to any other LLM that you want. The next question is, if you wanted to keep things free, is there any kind of AI SEO strategy that you can extract just from this data alone? And the only thing that I can really think of is kind of manual and tedious. We already know that these pages are getting referenced by ChatGPT, but it's not all the pages on our directory. In fact, if I change the rows per page to 250, you can see that only 120 pages are getting referenced by ChatGPT. And for this directory, I think I have over 5,000 pages. So there are quite a few that are not even being referenced, I would assume. And this is the part where it would get pretty manual, but you can go and find those other pages on your website that are not getting referenced by ChatGPT and try to establish what we call SERP dominance for those pages. And I'll show you what I mean. So I was playing around with ChatGPT and I just asked, where can I find scratch and dent appliances in Livermore, California? And I chose that because I just saw Livermore, California on this Google Analytics. And I just did this to quickly confirm that I was being referenced and I am somewhere in these sources area for this query. And then I started plugging in different cities. I did Eau Claire, Wisconsin next because I noticed that it's not on this list here. And so I figured it wouldn't get referenced. So I just wanted to see what would happen. And surprisingly, I'm actually showing up in a pretty good spot right over here for Get It Now appliance store in Eau Claire. So that's kind of cool. It didn't show up on my Google Analytics, but I guess I'm still being cited. I kept on playing around tried Vineland, New Jersey, and this is the first city where I noticed that I was not referenced anywhere on the results or the sources right over here. So this is a good example to kind of talk about this idea of SERP dominance. If I wanted to rank higher on Vineland, New Jersey, both in LLMs and in Google as well, I would probably be paying attention to these websites right here, which very closely match the front page of Google for scratch and dent appliances, Vineland, New Jersey. You can see that appliances plus is a very 
very first website. And what do we see right here? We see Appliances Plus as the very first cited website. Okay, so what's the point and what's the strategy here? Well, in my opinion, there are two ways that you can achieve SERP dominance. And the first option is really just traditional SEO. I would go and build high quality and relevant backlinks to my Vineland, New Jersey page and hope that it can creep into this first page of Google for this keyword, Scratch and Dent Appliances, Vineland, New Jersey. The second option is not that far off, but it's just more targeted. And what I would do is just reach out to the websites already ranking on the first page to try to get a backlink from them or some kind of mention. Because clearly ChatGPT is pulling from Google. And if we are mentioned in these websites, then we have a higher chance of getting cited by LLMs. This is a very scrappy way to go about your AI SEO strategy. And I don't think I would recommend it. There are very specific use cases where this would even make sense, such as a high ticket lead generation directory where you really want to hone in on a specific city and make sure you get the most visibility because that's where you know your leads would be coming from. In my opinion, it's just way too scrappy, not very thorough, and it doesn't answer the more important question in AI SEO, which is what are our competitors currently ranking for on ChatGPT that we're not, as well as just tell us if this is even worth it. And what I mean is that every time I start a new directory or I'm researching a niche, I want to know the total addressable search market that is available. And that kind of helps me gauge the opportunity that I'm missing out on. So this is SEMrush's regular SEO toolkit, and we'll be talking about their AI SEO toolkit in a little bit. But I just plugged in Scratch and Dent Appliances. And here we can see that 125,000 searches every single month contain the keyword Scratch and Dent Appliances. So what I'm saying is that you want to understand what this number is, but for LLM SEO within your niche. And that's when you would want to consider going for something like SEMrush's AI SEO toolkit. Real quick, before we go and audit a couple directories and their AI SEO strategy, I just wanted to give you a heads up that I was able to get this pretty cool offer for SEMrush's regular SEO pro toolkit. And they basically extended their typical seven day free trial to 14 days just for anyone listening or watching this. So if you do want access to a really good keyword research tool, as well as backlink research and audits and all this other cool stuff, here it is. I'll leave a link in the description below. Pretty much the only company I would recommend besides Ahrefs. These two have been leading the pack for a decade. So now let's take it to the next level. What can you actually control when it comes to your directory's AI SEO strategy? Because let's be honest, you can go and reach out to the websites that are ranking on the first page to try to achieve that SERP dominance, but that is leaving things up to chance because they might not respond. Or you might have to pay a lot of money just to get a backlink. That's when you want to consider a more advanced AI SEO tool like SEMrush's AI SEO toolkit. I'm always a little bit skeptical when I add things to my tech stack because that just increases cost. But after playing with this tool, it is pretty awesome. I'll show you how you can find the total traffic that you can get from ranking on LLMs like ChatGPT. I'll show you how you can spy on your competitors and see what prompts and queries that they are ranking for. And ultimately, I want to show you the actual use case that would make this worth it because it does cost $99 a month. So if you are going to pay for a tool like this, you should be able to use these insights to essentially make more money. Before we start, I do want to mention that this video is made in partnership with SEMrush. So with that said, let's go ahead and go into the visibility overview. Let's say hypothetically, I own a directory called samslist.co. This is a directory that is trying to be the Yelp of financial advisors, financial professionals, accountants, and kind of anyone under that umbrella. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy and paste Sam's list and we'll see what this tool tells us. So the first thing that I think is really useful is understanding the total addressable search volume that you could be taking advantage of if you do rank on ChatGPT or other LLMs. And in this case, there are 1.1 million people a month typing in certain queries that might relate to samslist.co. So just looking at this number, you can kind of gauge the opportunity at hand if you do kind of go all in on AI SEO. For Sam's List, it's also a very high ticket niche. If you can go and route a lead to a financial advisor, that could be a very valuable lead. Now scrolling down, there's a lot of good information under the topics and sources. And the way that I would use this if I were the owner of Sam's List is I would first check to see what's already working. And under this area where it's your performing topics, these are all the queries and the topics that Sam's List is already ranking for in ChatGPT or Google AI overviews. So just looking at LLC accounting and CPA services, you can see the actual prompts that Sam's List is showing out for. So for this one, it says, do I need bookkeeping services for my LLC? And if we look at the full response, then somewhere on this list, Sam's List is mentioned. And here we do see them right over here. And it's a blog that they wrote around when to hire a bookkeeper. 
over. So this is pretty useful just to see if your presence on ChatGPT is actually mapping out correctly. There are some other queries that are questionable and I don't know if they really make sense for Sam's list to be cited like basement rentals in Bethesda, but that's fine. There are some that are relevant. But the next thing that I would check here is cited pages. And the reason I want to see this is because I want to understand what types of content is actually working. What types of pages does ChatGPT prefer when it comes to citing pages from our directory? And in this case, we can see the ones that are working are all blogs. So that is pretty incredible. And this is something that I've been saying for the last few months, which is LLM SEO or AI SEO has introduced a new use case for writing blogs. After 2023, when the Google Core update hit and a lot of informational blogs and websites were destroyed, I didn't really see a reason to write blogs. Blogs. Unless you verify that a certain blog topic gets thousands of monthly searches and you're trying to write that blog because it's low competition and you're going to get traffic that way, I didn't really see another reason to write blogs until now. And here we can see it's clearly working. A lot of these blogs are starting to rank for these specific queries. So this one around CPA small businesses are ranking for how can I find the best tax accountant in Chicago for small businesses. There are a lot of long tail prompts, which is great because I feel like more long tail prompts have higher buyer intent. If you're typing this into ChatGPT, the chances are you are in the market for a tax accountant in Chicago for small businesses. So this is super, super useful to know. So if I were running Sam's list, then I would be thinking, okay, 38 blogs of mine are actually ranking for certain queries in ChatGPT. What other blogs can I write? How else can I capture more traffic, especially high buyer intent traffic? And that's when I would go over to topic opportunities. This kind of shows you the opportunities that you can go and rank for in ChatGPT, but you have to kind of go through this with a fine tooth comb because this one, for example, I don't think makes total sense when you look at some of the queries. It says, what are the best resources to learn five minute bookkeeping techniques? I would assume Sam Rush's tool kind of pulled this because bookkeeping might be mentioned on Sam's list, but Sam's list is a directory trying to monetize by attracting people looking for accountants and financial advisors and then connecting them with the actual financial advisor himself or herself. So this query doesn't really make sense to optimize for if you're Sam's list, because I don't think it's very strong in terms of leading to new leads. But there are some other good opportunities here. And you can see under this one for bookkeeping services and business listings, some people are typing, how can I verify the credibility of a bookkeeping business online? So you can write a blog around that. And Sam's list has a bunch of great ways that they're vetting their own financial advisors and accountants. So they could basically title a blog exactly like this and then give people information that will then act as top of the funnel to their directory. And who knows, that might turn into a lead that way. And you can go down the list, check out all these different prompts, there's 30,000 pages of relevant potential prompts that Sam's list could be targeting. And you would basically just want to filter these out and choose the ones that you think make the most sense based on how you're monetizing Sam's list. So that's why it makes sense to use a tool like SEMrush's AI SEO toolkit when you already have some traction. Sam's list has been around for, I think, almost two years. They do have decent SEO. It's getting better every day. And I know Kimmy's on it because without traction, you don't have any data. And without the data, you can't really use a tool like this to its full potential and identify what other opportunities there are to rank in LLMs. So now let's check out their competitor research tool. And if we click on this, then we can see that it automatically maps you out to specific competitors that it thinks is relevant to you, which in this case is Azron Financial, which I looked up and it is something to do with accounting. Okay. So it's an actual boutique accounting company. So that's okay. I I think ideally you want to have another accounting directory, but I don't think a lot of those exist. So the main thing I wanted to show you here, which I think is the most useful about this competitor research tool is the topics and prompts. And here you can see a bunch of different topics that you are already ranking for. And you can even see if your competitor is ranking for them as well. It doesn't look like it in their case, but if you go over to missing, then you can now see certain prompts and certain topics that you're not showing up for. Now, all of a sudden, you have a very targeted blog topic that you know is worth it. Maybe not so much for getting organic search volume from Google, but for ranking on ChatGPT. And I think this is pretty useful. Like in this case, it's crypto and financial consulting firms. We see Asron Financial getting a citation from Google here, and it's probably somewhere along the lines here. 
there they are. And so if I were Sam's List, I would go and write an article that also is related to crypto and financial consulting firms. And then the same goes for Forensic Accounting in Los Angeles. So in this case, there's only two different blogs that we can go and write about, but you can go and do this for virtually any other competitor. Let's just say, for example, I was Sam's List and I wanted to boost up my Los Angeles presence within ChatGPT. I would just go and find an accounting company or a CPA firm in LA and then plug them in here, see what types of prompts and queries that they're ranking for, and then go and write those blogs to compete with them. So that's how I would create a very simple strategy for AI SEO just using this. So that was the lead gen directory. And now I want to take a look at a display ad revenue directory. And this is a directory that someone in the shipper directory pro community actually created. And it's laundromatsnearme.org. This is what it looks like. And this is actually getting just about a thousand monthly visitors, if I'm not mistaken. So what I did is I just plugged it into this tool in the visibility overview tool. And we can see here that there's 7,500 total monthly searches where we could try to get this directory cited by ChatGPT and other LLMs. Now, just looking at this, it looks like laundromats as a niche doesn't present a massive opportunity to get traffic, which is kind of a bummer, especially if you intend on using display ads as your monetization strategy. This might just tell you that the people looking up information around laundromats are going more to Google than LLMs, because I did do the research with Jerry and we looked at the keyword volume around laundromats and it's in the tens of thousands. So that is something to take into consideration for this particular niche. This number is super relative to the niche that you're building in. If this was the same number, but I was building in commercial demolition and I had a directory around that, then all of a sudden, this is a massive opportunity because one of those leads looking for a commercial demolition that comes into my directory can be sold for probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So let me just show you the biggest observation that I found using this tool for this directory. I was checking out these topics and resources and I went over to cited pages pages because as we can tell there are some queries that this directory is already showing up for and we can see some of them here so I wanted to see which pages were working and that's when I noticed that all of these pages that are being cited by ChatGPT are his listing pages. So if we take a look at this URL, which I already pulled up right here, it's a listing page for a specific laundromat called 25th Street Coin Laundry. And if we look at the actual content, a lot of the content and the data enrichment is question and answer format. And this is something that I've heard from other SEOs. They tell people to optimize your pages for a Q&A format. And I think a lot of us can learn something from this in terms of how to structure our listings, the format, the data enrichment should be structured in so that we can get better AI visibility. Real quick, just looking at the competitor research for laundromats near me, we do see that there are a few different competitors that it considers. And the same thing goes for this one. I would pretty much just check what I'm missing and see if I could go and create listing pages in this case, because again, those are what's working around these topics. So maybe just including a Q&A format question on your listings around cheap laundromats, like is this a cheap laundromat? And then just giving your answer that way. 24 hour laundromat, same thing. It's essentially just just looking at what's working already and then looking at the low hanging fruit opportunities in this competitor research tool and then just going ahead and adding that data enrichment to your actual directory. So those are the two tools that I found the most valuable and I thought I would share that with you. But there are more tools included in this AI SEO toolkit, things like a prompt research tool, brand performance, perception, narrative drivers, and the list goes on. So you can go and check those out if you decide. But I think the bulk of this value comes from these two tools. So that's how you would have a more targeted approach when it comes to creating an AI SEO strategy. I will say it's more worth it once you have a good foundation and you're getting at least a thousand monthly visitors, because at that point you have some previous data that you can work with. If you want to access SEMrush's SEO Pro Toolkit that we briefly went over, there is a 14-day free trial that they were very kind to extend to anyone watching this video. And that's for more traditional keyword research, backlink research, that kind of stuff. But if you want to access SEMrush's AI SEO Toolkit that we just went over during those audits, then that is also linked in the description below. However, there is no free trial for that tool. So hopefully you learned something and let me know if you found any differences between traditional SEO and AI SEO in your own experiments. Always curious to hear what you have to say in the comments below. With that, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much for the support and I'll catch you in another video. See ya.